Welcome to Brain Junk. I'm Trace Kerr. And I'm Amy Barton. A few years ago, I turned 39, and at that time, I realized, why am I waiting till 40 to try things and do things? You know, people say, oh, I'm turning 40, I'm going to do blah, blah. I'm like, so that year, I made a list of things like, I want to do some stuff, I want to try some things. And that led me down the road to lots of fun stuff, but it also has left a huge list of excellent things that I would like to do but haven't yet. And one of those things is beer choir. That is a thing here in Spokane that I have yet to do <laughs> that's on the attainable both budgetarily and time-wise. So someday I will do beer choir. And beer choir is exactly what it sounds like. You go to a bar or a pub, they choose a location, and I think it's monthly, and you'll see a Facebook thing pop up saying beer choir at Joe's Pub, and there's a hymnal apparently, and you drink beer and you sing, and I love that. <laughs> I will do it someday. <laughs> so we're going to talk all about things we have not tried yet, but we want to. Ooh, that sounds excellent. You first. Me you first. Second. I already won first. Yeah, that's true. You did. You know, it was funny trying to come up with these because I, I realized after I listed about 20 things that I am not an adrenaline junkie. I don't have hang gliding or jumping out of an airplane <laughs> on my list. Uh, I do have, I think my most adventurous thing is to visit a foreign country that isn't hooked to North America. That's a good goal. Because that's not something that I've done. I have yeah. a passport. Can't drive to it. Yeah. So it has to be something more international than Canada or Mexico. Okay. Do you have a, a destination in mind? Hmm. Going to visit the land of your people and see all the other redheads? See all <laughs> <laughs> I think I would like to, uh, you know, well, and this kind of tags in with my, I took a Japanese in high school and I don't yeah. remember any of it. So, for the, but for mm -hmm. the longest time I was like, I want to go to Japan and I would like to look at that part of the world and I would like to go to Europe and I would like to go to do the Ireland and British Isles and all that kind of stuff. I, I, I don't know. It's getting Chaz on board. He's kind of like, eh, I could garden. Um, <laughs> I do like that idea of the cult big cultural difference because it feels like visiting Europe is sort of like visiting cousins. You know they live a little differently, but I'm going to understand a lot of it. Whereas in Japan, there's really differences, some big, yes. be fascinating, really interesting. Yeah, it would. And then going along with your beer choir, I would also like to get singing lessons at some point because I can sing... Okay, but I'm one of those people that sings all up in your head and I don't have any oh, yeah. breath, you know, so I'm just, I, I can't carry a note because I just <gasps> run out. <laughs> uh, so I think, yeah, that'd be kind of interesting to try. It would be fun. Do you have any things that you would like to learn that you need lessons for? Yes! <laughs> Tap dancing! <laughs> Tap dancing was totally right. It was number one until I bumped up and thought, oh, beer choir, it's the perfect first one. But oh, yeah. Tap dancing. And uh, WikiHow has 12 easy steps to learning to tap dance, of course. Well, you're in luck because I think we could trade some lessons here <gasps> because I could teach you tap dancing and yeah. you could show me how to ride a unicycle because that's on my list. Oh, it's on my list still, too. Yeah, but you've at least got I own one. one. Yes. That was on my 39 list uh, to try unicycling because I picked up bicycling uh, maybe 2011. I started biking um, for the first time since childhood. And I thought maybe magic will strike. I can ride a bike real easy. I can do some things I didn't expect to be able to do. So I bought a unicycle hoping maybe that was a secret talent and it's not. <laughs> <laughs> But we have a different setup. We've moved to a new place, and I'm hoping there is an easy, I can hang on the garage door and start trying. We'll see. Because you do you have a long, long straight flat drive. driveway. Mm -hmm. Softer dirt area. that I Yeah, because <laughs> I do want to learn how to ride. I have a pretty good balance. I would like to learn how to ride a unicycle. Me too. And then I'll you could you. stand there and give me pointers. and Yeah, next spring. I'll work on it next spring, and we'll do a follow-up episode <laughs> from the hospital. If... <laughs> No. no. That would be a good video to post. Okay. Mm. I'll just shoot a picture of the unicycle. It's all in one piece again since we moved. Oh, that's good. <laughs> What's your number two? My number two? Or whatever. Um, yeah. yeah, they're kind of like all over the place. Well, mm -hmm. actually, I'd have to say my number two, actually my number one, my number, there is no number because it's so high up on the top, is getting a book published. Yeah. I have several books written. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of right place, right time. Yeah. yeah. If anybody is interested in a young adult contemporary fantasy about <laughs> magic, hit me up. 
Um, There's definitely yeah. varying levels of control and accessibility on my list, and probably yours too. Mm. Uh, I could do beer choir next month because it won't be so busy, right? But. Uh, there's definitely monetary constraints and time constraints on a lot of these things and just basic coordination or you know, <laughs> physical like, can I do I have the muscle memory now? Can I do this? How long will it take to develop the muscle memory? And will it be injured in the process? Oh, yes. <laughs> We're that age. Yeah. So one of the things that I had to add to the list mm -hmm. because Zoe desperately wants to do it is to raise a seeing eye dog puppy. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like a lot of work. It is. It is a lot of work. When I met a gal who they just had a movie come out, it, the Puppies of Promise. It's all over the United States, but uh, she's from the Seattle group, mm -hmm. and they they made a movie about raising the puppies and all this kind of stuff. And but you have them for like a year and a half, mm -hmm. and then off they go. And Aww. I know I'm it's, it's like a really condensed parenting experience. Yeah. You know, you get all the fun, <laughs> cool stuff. And then when you've done all the work, bye bye. Uh, and then they go off and help somebody. But I think that would be a that's a huge thing. I would love to do that. That would be wonderful. How about learning languages? <gasps> uh, I download the Duolingo app periodically and brush up on my French. Uh, Allie has started my daughter. I think she tried Italian. She, yes, languages are definitely on my retirement plan. I should start sooner. My brain needs <laughs> yes. me to start sooner. <laughs> I know Zoe's taking French this year, and oui. Chaz took a lot of French, so he speaks eh, okay. Il parle en français a petit peu avec some English, much English. <laughs> Um, and so I've been, I've been saying, can we practice this? Because I would like to coattail along because he did has. Did you take French, did you say? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. Um, Chaz is, uh, has an aunt that lives in Canada, you know, his, that oh, side of the family. Sure. And, you know, he's got two cousins that live up there and mm -hmm. speak French and they speak it fluently. And so. That'd be a fun Kind of like, maybe we should all practice so that yeah. we could, yeah. That would be excellent. Maybe get a stamp in that passport. Yes. That's just gathering that's dust right. and looking but you can sad. to it. <laughs> One of the things Chris and I were talking about, my husband, rally car driving school. And that was one where he brought it up, but I thought, yes, I would like to try that. I'm not, I'd be like driving 40 and they'd be like, you can speed up. I'm having fun at this speed, but thanks. I do think I would like to try that. There is a school called Dirtfish in Seattle at dirtfish.com. Go visit if you like to look at all that stuff. For somewhere around three to four thousand dollars, you can have a weekend long kind of this exclusive driving experience where they take you from, I like to jump the line at stoplights to you can really navigate a rally course. So uh, for those of you who do not watch a lot of car shows or are familiar, rally driving is through country Out, lanes, outside, on dirt right? roads. Yes, it's not usually a paved track. It's lots of different terrains. And usually there's a guy in the front seat with him. What must that be like to be front seat guy? <laughs> it's like left, <laughs> left. That's hill. a navigator. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Tree, tree. <laughs> exactly. I do not want to be that. For you Top Gear watchers, the whole there was an episode of the new Top Gear where Rory does track laps at Nuremberg, and then he's coached by Sabine, who is the track master there. She's the one who, she's the one, and then she gets in and does a lap, and he is holding on and almost getting sick, and he's horrified because he's been doing it all day, and he's fine-tuning, and he finally, yes, he, he gets the whatever time that they were hoping for. She gets in and crushes it, and he feels barfy. And <laughs> all my stories are sad today, but that one was quite funny too. <laughs> it's not so, sad. <laughs> Dirtfish.com. Take a look. You can see they've got a whole bunch of coaches, and they'll show you all your terrain, and you can choose your car and pretend to go. They've got shorter experiences too, where you can just go for a few hours. If you're visiting for the weekend, you could go for a few hours for a few hundred bucks and give it a try in someone else's car. Teenagers, oh. mm. save up the money. Don't do this in your parents' car. I don't no. care if it's a Toyota with four-wheel drive. That <laughs> Tercel cannot handle that. Don't do it. What about you? Uh, I have more driving stuff. <gasps> so every summer, my daughter and I, we take a road trip of some kind. Yeah. Uh, we've driven to Kansas. And really? we've driven down to Southern California. Mm -hmm. I would like to visit all 50 states in the United States. I don't care how I get there. Yeah. 
Do you um, have? Do you want to do it like I want to do the summer of the fifty states, where you go every two days to a new state, or ooh. like maybe over three or four summers? I think that's a lifetime of working kind okay. of thing. And it's funny. I was counting today. I've got twenty four, but and it's mostly West Coast. And it hooks down, stops at Texas. So we haven't done Texas. We haven't done New Mexico. And then kind of cuts across the middle. Yeah. And then we lived in Georgia for two years. So we've got, you know, a little bit of the East Coast. But mm-hmm. the upper parts of the United States, like Michigan and yeah. and then heading off towards Maine and Vermont and all those kind of things. Yes. Or it's just a I, I would like to go. But uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, driving all the way across. Zoe wants to drive all the way across. And um might be more fun to drop down into a state and grab a rental car. Yeah. Well, I don't, you know, I don't mind doing that, but it was 1,400, 1,600 miles to uh, Kansas City. That was a long trek. It was a lot of driving, and mm-hmm. I was the only driver. So yes. her plan is to get her driver's permit, and mm-hmm. then she was like, oh, I'm going to get all the hours, because in Washington State, you have to have 50 hours. Oh, uh, okay. Although. That's good fact to know. <laughs> well, but here's the thing. First child. I they give you a form and you know I'm documenting it and they have to have so many hours in the dark and so many hours like this and so many so I'm writing it all down and yeah. we show up to get him to get to take the driving test mm-hmm. and then while he's at the test I put down my giant you know <laughs> 50 hours and I've recorded them yeah. all and it was more than 50 and she just glances at it she goes okay and I said but but <gasps> You know, ah! But look, it's like annotated and indexed, yeah! and but the type A person in me is this was really dark and rainy. I know. I mean, I mean, I had really, really, and she was like, "Yeah, yeah, it's okay." First kid, right? Oh, really? Mm. Wow. Yeah, mm. I'm gonna do the same thing again with her. I know it, but uh, yeah, yeah, I was kind of like, "Come on, guys." Yeah. <laughs> I want to know that the people licensed on the road, yeah, they are qualified. To that be they would. On the re- road. She's well. She said. When he takes his driving test, we'll know if it's been 50 hours. I was like, well, mm. no, you don't know that. You don't know that. Maybe he didn't drive at night. Maybe he's fine during the daylight, but you turn off the lights and he freaks out and he doesn't know what to <laughs> I don't know. It was just kind of <laughs> man. We have laws for a reason. I made a poster for myself and I pop it up once in a while. I work with children, so I can never actually have it. The movie Alien, where if they had just listened and not let the guy into the airlock, there would never be any Alien series. They left the guy outside. Oh, followed yes. Followed protocol. protocol. Do mm-hmm. the rules, people. Yeah. People would not have aliens. So I have, we have rules for a reason. <laughs> and I've got the guy from the first movie that's with on the, the table. With the thing coming out of his chest. Oh, no. The face hugger. I went with that one. Yeah. It's a little bit less gory. I can post it in with older <laughs> children. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> can we switch modes to glamping? Really big shift. But Oh, yeah. Glamping is on my list. So we're going to go from aliens bursting out of people's chests to super deluxe camping. Yes. Okay, bring it on. I We camped as a lot as kids, and I enjoyed it. But I, as an adult, want immediate proximity to a bathroom that does not require the putting on of shoes <laughs> and forest navigation. <laughs> and... I do not want an air mattress that may or may not stay inflated all night. I'm not good at camping as an adult being in charge. I was great at camping as a kid. But, you know, the air mattress, now we use really high-tech ones now, but the old-fashioned one where you'd blow it up and it's... Mine cost $8. You know, and and you you have a a hernia and possibly (laughs) faint because you're just exhaling and exhaling and exhaling Mm -hmm. and you're not... And and, uh, I had several times where it rained so hard that the tent flooded and then we floated on the water on the air mattress, which we wouldn't do now. I'm looking at my watch. My heart rate is going to go up right now just thinking about that. I remember so many. I am not, I, I do not withstand <laughs> adversity of lack of sleep well. So camping for me has meant a lot of lack of sleep. I remember I've got a really distinct childhood memory of my dad snoring. Uh, and I'm laying there in the tent knowing I was trapped all night. I'm like, I think it's only 11 <laughs> o'clock. Why so, is it so dark? Yeah. And I, being indoors would not change that, but at least I'd be more comfortable and warm. So you want so glamping. The, I go. the fancy tent and the cot, and it's yes. all set up when you get there. So and... those of you who want glamping info, go to glampinghub.com. So glamping, G-L-A-M-P-I-N-G. Glamping Glamorous hub. camping. Yep. You can rent a yurt. You can go on a safari tent, teepee, caves, barns. Some of these are really loose definitions because to me it needs to be kind of a tent, a non-permanent structure to consider it glamping. Cave doesn't sound very glamorous. It was amazing. Think Cooper Petey, but oh, with that's Martha right. Stewart. <laughs> that's right. Um, you can get a hut or an igloo or a caboose or a floating 
yurt or something, Islands Towers. There were no towers. I clicked on that link. I'm like, oh, yes, I want to go to a tower. <laughs> There's nothing. I wanted to be Rapunzel for the weekend. Do I get a wig with like 20 foot long braid yeah. of hair? <laughs> so you can do that from anywhere. They had experiences as low as $116, but you can also go up to, I found one for 3200 You can go to Nairobi. Uh, $1,700 cave experience in the Ozarks. Whoa. There is some amazing, and it's like you take Martha Stewart to wherever and tell her, could you make this yurt look beautiful? And they, it's amazing. Oh. I would like to do that. Maybe that I could use that with my going to a foreign country thing. Yeah. You with all the money that I'll Europe. have from my book sale. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> That's going to be great. I would also like to learn street magic. <gasps> like yeah. dealing the car, you know, moving the cards around mm-hmm. and doing all that. Oh, I want to learn that, but I also know I had do not have the attention span to get there. Yeah, because that is definitely, uh, you know, it's a dexterity thing. So it's There's probably a, lot of repetitive. a lifetime mm-hmm. of shuffling and palming. And so, yeah, I think that's one of those things where, and I think a lot of people have stuff like this on their I would like to do list. I would, li- I like the idea yes. of doing this thing. Like, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, where it's something where it would take a whole bunch of skill. I think a unicycle yeah. is achievable and tap dancing is achievable. But yeah. um, some of these where... I'm never going to be able to do street magic. Probably no. I <laughs> but I just like to think about it. It's yeah. on my list. Yes. I would also like to win a prize at a carnival game. I think this is mm-hmm. possible. Whether or not it's possible to do it without bribing a carny or using over $100, I'm not yeah. really sure. I don't know. Like one of the really big stuffed animals. I yes. I've always wanted to be that person. Like you giant know, giant unicorn. Yes, you yeah. pass them at the county fair, and they've mm-hmm. got the giant. I mean, I know those cost almost nothing, and they came in a container from China. <laughs> but I still want one. That represents time and effort. Yes. Yeah. Like I knocked over that bottle, or I threw the dart at the balloon, or mm-hmm. whatever that is. Yeah, that moment, that winning moment. Yeah, I remember as a kid. Um, dreaming about running and it feeling good and being happy about it and also really wanting to do like to wake up and know karate. So the dreaming about running thing, (laughs) I have made a concerted effort and I think I need to lose another 30 pounds, but I like cookies. And so I'm, I'm sort of letting that one ride. It might, I might never really be fully committed to that. But on the other hand, it turns out martial arts is just a lot of time spent doing the same thing over and over slightly differently until you get it right that one that one's a little bit more attainable for me personally that's true so what do we have things that um what was on your list that isn't on your list because you've done it for example i had things on that list like um i wanted to have a podcast oh and here we are i've done yeah you know or um i okay so my list my 39 list um i've done a piece of paper art that was just a short term to see if i liked it a lot of it was what might I like? I did a paper art, which was super fun because I went and got together with a friend's mom who does it. Um, I tried and can't ride the unicycle. Uh, we'll get there. Don't worry. I'm a brown belt in Taekwondo now. Woo! Uh, what well, else was have I done? Um, I am on my way to knowing how to whistle with the fingers in your mouth. <gasps> I can whistle for days, just normal whistle, but I want to do the whistle with the fingers in your mouth I'm or so like jealous. the ring finger thing. Yeah. That's on the list. That's a family goal, actually, that we just haven't spent any time on. <laughs> Oh, uh, what else was on that list? Those are kind of the high points. They're some of those kind of things. There's a lot of silly. I could look up my Pinterest page. Oh, that's true. That's okay. <laughs> See, uh, we wanted to do kayaking. So Zoe and I this oh, year yeah. finally saved up. We bought two kayaks and we've paddled yeah. uh, paddled all over the place. And that's one of those things, too, where uh, we're out there on a lake and we're paddling around. And I thought, why did it take us so long? I mean, besides the fact that it was a financial outlay to just yes. do this. You know, mm-hmm. this is really fun. Why weren't we doing this 10 years ago? Yeah, because we live in an area rich with bodies of water within less than an hour. Yeah, you fall out of your house and you're in a lake. Yeah, yeah. Um, you don't have to drive far. It could be 10 minutes here. Not at all. And then one thing that I did that I don't think I ever need to do again is uh, playing uh, 21 at a casino. Oh, really? What yeah. is that like? It was weird. My dad likes to go. They live pretty close to a casino. Um, yeah where they are on the west side and so for his birthday we went and uh you know i've been playing it on my phone because yeah you know what cards do i want to do and then but then there's this whole culture of how you you know here we go to we just talked about social conventions yes 
how you ask for cards and mm-hmm. how you put your hands and how you tap on the table. Were and you then clearly the, a newbie? Oh, my God. I mean, I just smelled like newbie. Um, <laughs> you know, and how the dealer does things because they keep yeah. their hands in view all the time and there's cameras on them. And, yeah, I sat in the wrong chair and then oh. I wasn't asking correctly. And it was... Okay, so my brother-in-law, oh. Stu, has worked. He's been a dealer. So maybe oh. we can get some classes from Stu and then do the casino thing again. Yeah, because it was awful. <laughs> Stu will teach us. It was. It was every. It was. Oh, it was like having to give that first big speech in front of the classroom in like sixth or seventh grade. And you grade. thought you were prepared. Oh no, and I was not prepared. Yeah, yeah, and I lost money, not a lot. <laughs> but, but yeah, and then and then there were things like I knew beginner stuff. You know, I knew to call and I knew to hit and I knew to you know. Let, but then there were other things on the table, this felt table, things and happening. you could put you could put uh, chips over here and you could put chips over there because you were betting on this and betting on that. And I was just like, I don't know how to do any of that. And no. this guy has stuff stacked everywhere, and he looks super cool, and he was winning money. And That's a I lot sh- of sensory input. Oh man! All at once. And the second dealer, because they switched dealers, she sat down and we did one round. And she's looking at me and she just shook her head. Oh, oh no. <laughs> she was just like, just hand me the chips. Just get up and leave. Oh, it was <laughs> awful. <laughs> oh, if you enjoy watching, um, being a spectator of that kind of thing, I have to recommend the TV show An Idiot Abroad. And it's usually on some streaming media service. It is, if you're familiar with comedians Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant, they are the host of this show. They send their friend Carl Pilkington all over on amazing journeys to like the seven wonders of the world. I think he's traveled to. And so he has these very, they send him to local native people and they, he does these amazing things, but he is a homebody. He is an English guy who likes to go to round the pub once in a while and, and have his cup of tea at the end of the day. Yes, that is him. He does not need excitement in his life. And so it is torture <laughs> for him. And then they find ways like to do side excursions or he has this local family experience where most of us would be like, Oh, that's so interesting and he hates it and it's so funny i'm sure the language is colorful but if you enjoy kind of watching other people enjoying that new thing but you like a little of that torture carl pilkington is your man it's a good series there you go yeah so i guess you know this didn't have a particular topic this episode but we've been talking a lot about you know what it is that we would like to try and Mm -hmm. then and i think what's been cool about this too is talking to other people and asking them you know, yeah. what is it that you would like to do? And I had to add some things to my list because somebody would say, oh, I've always wanted to learn how to juggle, although I know how to do that. Um, <gasps> you do. I do. That is a product of theater class in high school because Ooh. all the cool kids could play pianos and juggle. And I yeah. sucked at playing the piano. So mm-hmm. I was like, I've got to learn how to juggle. I um, have purchased tennis balls to that end <laughs> and I can toss them back and forth without looking. I can toss one back and forth. Yeah. Without. That's the level I've achieved. You got to work up to three. Yeah. yeah. But so, you know, try something new. See, even if you don't like it. Uh, I've been pushing the youngest cur out the door going, just try it. Doesn't mean you have to do it forever, you know? Mm-hmm. Try it. See if you like it. If you don't like it, eh, there's always something else to do. Yes. And you'll have good stories as a result. Yeah. Either way. And it's good for your brain. Your brain likes it. You're less likely to have Alzheimer's. Your myelination, your nerves are going to be so fatty and happy. I like fatty nerves. That's good. It's important. If you like fatty nerves, please come visit us at brainjunkpodcast.com. So there's not a lot of pictures on this one. It's mostly a list. I was thinking of finding some videos of some fun, cool things that I haven't done. Maybe there'll be Mm. some street magic on there. Yeah. Oh, I have this one guy that I watched his video uh, when I was doing research for a book. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to put that up there. So there's going to be lots of that kind of stuff. And for this and other episodes, look for Brain Junk wherever you find your podcasts. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. We tweet at My Brain Junk. And you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Brain Junk Podcast. Email us at brainjunkpodcast at gmail.com with your questions and episode ideas. You could also make statements. Trace and I will catch you next time <laughs> when we share more of everything you never knew you wanted to know. And I guarantee you will not be bored. Let's go find tap shoes. Okay. (laughs) 